Hey guys, welcome back to All Things Nice. It's your host, Fletcher, and today we're going to talk S30V blade steel in depth. And just to verify that these are, in fact, S30V knives. There you go. Got a mini grip in S30V and my Osborne in S30V. I've also had some pair of threes in S30V, PM2 and S30V that I've used and sharpened. And then at work, I've sharpened a ton of S30V. So let's go through some facts about S30V. So its technical name is Crucible Particle Metallurgy Steel S30V. That's the grade of steel. Its composition is composed of 1.45% carbon by weight. 14.00% chromium by weight, 4.00% vanadium, and 2.00% moly. The rest is going to be iron. Some facts about the steel is in catcher testing, it performs 145% better than 440C, meaning it does 100% of what 440C does, and then 45% better. It does 125% over 154CM. So it does 100% of what 154CM does and then 25% over. And I can say in testing and cardboard testing that I've watched, that checks out. Especially if you heat treat S30V harder, it'll perform even better. Carbide by volume, it's going to have 4% vanadium carbide and 10.5% chromium carbide. That is going to give you 14.5% carbide by volume in there. All right, some other facts that I have, I'm just going to read them off. For side loading toughness, meaning resistance to chipping, like if you're cutting into something and you have to go like that, it is 10 foot-pounds of force over 154cm and 440cs, 2.5 foot-pounds of force. The uses for it obviously are cutlery. It was designed as a cutlery steel. Plastic injection, food processing, and chemical processing. The ideal range, as, as noted by Crucible, the producer of this steel, is 58 to 61 Rockwell hardness. And this steel first came out in 2001 and 2002. So now that we have some technical aspects for S30V. I also saw on their charts that I was looking at earlier today that these steels, S30V, is actually more corrosion resistant than 440C and 154CM. I did notice that when I did my acid wash job on it, it did take a while. Definitely took longer than the D2. It definitely is more corrosion resistant than OS8 because this definitely took longer than the OS8 to do. I will say that it's probably due to the molybdenum carbides that are in there. That's part of what makes 154CM so corrosion resistant. The fact that it has a, a lot, not a lot of free chromium in solution, molybdenum can also improve corrosion resistance. I believe niobium carbides do the same thing. S30V, as far as wear resistance goes, it's pretty good. I've seen some cardboard tests done by people, and it got, on Outpost 76 tests, I think it got 170 feet, which for, which means when I probably run through it, I think my cardboard's a little different than his, I'll probably get somewhere around 200 for it which isn't bad at all. The thing that makes S30V different from a lot of the budget steels that you've seen on my channel, especially for edge testing, is the fact that these strop back. These are gonna strop back way better. They're gonna be easier to, to handle. If you do make your own knives, S30V and those Crucible Particle Metallurgy steels they machine a lot better 
This is from my own personal experience on a couple of knives I made. I made some knives in 4V, and the comparison from those, as opposed to, say, something like D2, 4V was arguably, despite having harder carbides, way easier to sharpen and machine. Which explains why high-end cutlery companies started making the switch from the cheaper, like, 440Cs, 154Cms into something like S30V, which is, even though sometimes those steels were performed just as good as S30V, is because the machinability of a steel like S30V is so much better, which means that for someone like like you and me, knife users, we're going to notice that as well, but in sharpening. I've noticed when sharpening S30V that it doesn't take the sharpest edge, but it will keep its bite due to the, the carbide volume in there. Even up to a higher grip polish, it keeps the bite because of that carbide content. Even after being polished, I've noticed S45VN does the same thing. Some people say that S30V is chippy. I'd actually beg to differ. I've never really had any of my S30V chip out. What I will say is if it is chippy, sharpen it a couple times and then see how it does then. A lot of the people who say that S30V is chippy, most of the time it's their burnt factory edge. It's their burnt factory edge. Because this steel is actually tougher than 154CM and 440C when it comes to side loading it. You know, maybe not this way, right? But this way, it's edge stability is very good. And that's that's straight from Crucible's data sheets as well. They've they did testing on this. I've heard plenty of knife reviewers say the same thing. The only time S30V is chippy is if the edge is burnt. Now, would I recommend S30V to someone when they pick up their first knife? My answer would actually be yes, because it's a good, well-rounded EDC steel. You know, it'll strop back. It won't strop back a ton, but, you know, you can strop it back at two to three times before you got to take it back to the stone. So you do get some increased edge life there. It does sharpen relatively easily. Not too bad at all. And the edge that you get and the edge that it holds is pretty decent. And you get a decent amount of fine edge and a decent amount of working edge. Now, if I had to draw a... We, those are just my notes. But if I had to draw a graph of how I feel that S30V is, we're going to do that multi-directional teeter-totter. Edge retention here. We've got ease of sharpening here. Corrosion resistance and then toughness. I would say for edge retention, here it's one, right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, we'll add one more, 10. I would say that S30V, one being H1, two being like a 420, Three being like an OS eight, five being like a one fifty four cm. I'm gonna say it's like a six point five. I'd say S thirty V is like here, because it's not gonna hold its edge super long. And ease of sharpening, it's about a five. Right there, corrosion resistance. It's actually gonna do pretty good. I would say, arguably, it's like a six or seven, down here. And then toughness, you know, it's not going to be the toughest steel, but I would say it's definitely a five or six. It's about average, if not above average. So let's connect those to form our, our lattice here. Let's 
that's what I'd say you get when you buy a steel like S30V. You see how it's pretty even in all of these? I'd say it's a good EDC steel. It's easy to sharpen. It's easy to sharpen. It takes a fine edge. It keeps its bite too, which is really good for EDC usage. I would recommend this steel, especially if you're just getting into the EDC community, you don't need anything crazy, right? You want something that's got a good combination of everything, especially while you are finding out more about steels and what they can take. And if you're getting used to carrying a good knife, S30V is a great starter steel because of the, the attributes that you get with it for the price. Like, you can get a mini Griptilian in this for 110 if not less, if you find them on sale. You can get a Spyderco Native 5 for $108. You can get a Manix 2 in it as well. There's, they're starting to phase it out for S45VN, but it's and that's because S45VN just has some more favorable characteristics than S30V, but S30V is still a great blade steel, and it's been out since 2001, 2002. It's almost a 20-year-old steel, and it's still going strong. Benchmade still uses it on all of their, like, starting knives. And there's a reason for that, is because for what you are paying for, you get amazing performance. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe if you're not subscribed. Please comment down below your experience with S30V and whether or not you like it. And maybe a steel you would like to see next on this end up series that I'm doing on steels. Where we kind of discuss the science behind them and then the practical EDC usage for them. As always, thanks for watching guys. You have a good one.